If you guys thought that that would be it and that we finished eating all this goodness, a symbol of happiness and vacation for all of you who are landing in the Italian airport, Italian artworks. You know how history goes. Hey guys, welcome to Dramatically Expatic and welcome to Reggio Emilia, a lovely city in Emilia-Romagna region that is not very well known to tourists and is pretty underrated, but it also is known as the food capital of Italy. I know I've told that about Bologna, I said that about Parma, but trust me, Reggio Emilia definitely deserves to be one of the three food capitals of Italy. Let's call it this way. And I'm very excited to discover it with you today. I'm very excited to eat our way through Reggio Emilia and also not only to try the foods, the local foods, but also to learn more about the backstage, behind the scenes of how these foods are being produced. Trust me, guys, you're in for an amazing ride today. I have something very exciting for you, something surprising, something that we've never done before. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. And if you want to support our channel, make sure to hit the thanks button or follow the link in the description box and become our supporter. Having said that, I invite you to join me on this day in Reggio Emilia. Let's go. Guys, I love Reggio Emilia so far. It's my first time here and it's absolutely charming and loving. Maybe I didn't expect it to be so lively and vibrant, maybe because it's Saturday, but there are so many people, so many people with kids and pets walking around. The cafes, the coffee shops are full of people and it feels so full of energy. I absolutely love it. I love how you can walk around and just stumble upon really cute courtyards or even galleries. Look at this gallery up there. I think it's so ancient and it looks really, really good here. Since it's almost Christmas, I found one of the most typical local uh, sweets, local desserts that are prepared for Christmas and it's a type of cake and it's prepared here and in Modena. I've been trying to find it in Bologna everywhere, but it's nowhere to be found apparently. It's only made here. Grazie mille. Buona giornata, ciao. That's Italian hospitality, guys. When you can not only buy something, but also try something. They have the best chocolate. It's so good. Also, before we try this pangata, I'm so, so hungry. I haven't planned anything for lunch here today. But I saw a couple of things here on the market and I'm about to try them. So yeah, let's go, let's try them. And then I'll show you what this pangata looks like. I am just so, so hungry today. Everything just smells so good around here. Since we are trying all the local goodness today, we got some erbazzone, which is this kind of um, a pie with herbs. And I, I suppose ricotta, but tell me if I'm wrong, which smells heavenly and some Lambrusco because we are in Reggio Emilia, so of course we are drinking the local wine and local food and I just love it so much. We are having so many good local products today, guys. Mm. I might be just very, very hungry, but it's so good. It's delish. The pie crust is so tender and the filling is so rich in flavor and also texture. I love when the filling is really, really, you know, te textury. I'm sorry, <laughs> just, I'm really hungry and it's so good. Mm. It's perfect. Cheers, guys. I'll be here for the foreseeable future.
Okay, guys, time for my unexpected dessert. I didn't expect, I, didn't, I like, well, I kind of expected it. I just didn't think of it. I didn't uh, mean to find or to look for spangata today. So I am very, very excited to try it. And also just a side note, while I'm opening my Christmas goodness, because it's Christmas time, I just noticed that everyone is so nice here. And people are just so generally friendly. Uh, everyone is smiling. I love it. So let's get to my spongata. Ah, oh, it looks amazing. So this is a pie and it's supposed to be something like a mince pie, like the Christmas mince pie. Oh, let's try this way. It has all this dry fruit and nuts inside. I'm excited. Oh my God. It's better than mean spice. It's the best spicy and with dry fruit thing pie Christmas thing I've ever tried in my life. It's better than any other Christmas treat I've tried in my life. It's so good. I wish you could try it. Guys, if you happen to be in Emilia Romagna, even if you just come to Bologna, go to Reggio, go to Modena, but you have to try it. Especially if you come around Christmas. Christmas will not be Christmas for me anymore without this. Guys, I will of course leave you all the links to all the places we visit today, where to get a spongata, where to drink your coffee. And if you want to have a virtual coffee with me, you can buy me a virtual cup of coffee by following the link in the description box. Or if you want to support my channel, otherwise, do not hesitate and hit the thanks button down below, right near the like button. I'm so very grateful to each one of you supporting our channel and helping us to make even more amazing travel vlogs for you. If you guys thought that that would be it and that we finished eating all this goodness that this region and this city has to offer, you are wrong. You know this product as the Parmesan cheese. But did you actually know that the true, the real name of, uh, of this cheese is Parmigiano Reggiano? This is gonna be the first time we are doing something like this on my channel, guys. But I'm going to take you backstage. We're gonna see the whole process from the beginning till the end. We'll try the end product, of course. Uh, I'm taking you to the heart of the Italian cuisine. Let's go with me. Guys, as promised, I came to a very, very special place. We can hear to this Latteria, a place where Parmigiano Reggiano cheese is being produced and I'm so excited to peek inside and to see the entire production process. I will show you everything, how the cheese is being produced and how you can try it afterwards. Let's go with me, I'm so, so excited. Latteria La Grande is located not far from Reggio Emilia and they've been producing authentic Parmigiano Reggiano since the 1940s. Now, why Parmigiano Reggiano? Because the authentic cheese that is authorized to be called Parmigiano Reggiano is produced in a strictly designated area between the provinces of Parma, Reggio Emilia, Modena, a part of Bologna and a part of Mantua. The special breeds of cows are fed strictly grass and natural hay that should also be coming only from this area. That's why this cheese cannot be replicated. The process itself is also quite intricate, but even if you know it, you won't be able to produce this cheese anywhere else in the world, and people have tried to, but failed miserably. Now to the first step. The skim milk from last night's milking is mixed with fresh milk from that morning, milked no more than two hours earlier. The whey is added as well as enzymes from the stomach of the young cows to change the consistency to denser one. And imagine it, 1000 liters of milk are needed to produce only two wheels of cheese. The liquid warms up to 36 or 37 degrees Celsius and then it takes about one hour for the block to form. The remaining liquid is used to make ricotta, by the way. Next, the wheels are placed in a separate room and are turned upside down three times during the first day. A special belt is also put around to mark the cheese according to the consortium rules for one night. After three days there, the blocks are immersed in the salt solution for 20 days and a couple more days to dry. Then the best part begins, or the most impressive one. The blocks are placed in a warehouse to age and I wish you could smell this room! After one year, the cheese is evaluated to get the final approval if it can be sold as young Parmigiano Reggiano or aged longer and sold afterwards. 
The cheese is thoroughly examined for holes and other production errors, and if any are found, it is marked with lines to show that this is not the first grade Parmigiano Reggiano, but can only be marked as a generic unnamed table cheese. You know, pretty plain. You can of course buy all this goodness here, come for a guided tour or degustation, and it's always a good idea to search for authentic producers rather than buying from big shops. And you probably know that if you've been on my channel for some time. Now check the description box for details on how to reach Latteria La Grande and enjoy! I'll start with this one, which is 24 months old, and um, it was advised for us to start with this, which is younger. And it's very, very good. The taste is quite mild, it's not as strong as the older, the more aged cheese, but I'm really excited to try the this one, which is 15 months old. It smells so good. Mm. And hands down, the best I've ever tried. It's the best. It's so strong, but also so good. When you guys see the three colors, the green, the white, and the red, you instantly think of the highest quality possible, whether it's on food products or clothes or any kind of things made in Italy. And it is also the symbol of happiness and vacation for all of you who are landing in the Italian airports. And I'm, of course, talking about the Italian flag in the symbol of Italy, of course, but also in reality, on a more serious note, it symbolizes deeper things like hope, faith, and the blood that Italian history has seen a lot of. And guys, did you know that the official colors of the Italian flag were first coined here in Reggio Emilia? And I'm going to show you not only the palace where it happened, but even the room where it happened. Follow me. There is a museum and you can also see the room where the historical event happened, where it took place. Although everything is located inside the town hall and there are even uh, wedding ceremonies that are held here. There was one right before we arrived and the guests are now exiting and leaving the room before we can film around. But also it strikes me that it all seems a lot like a theater because look at these stairs. You have to climb up to see the room from above. I mean, it feels like behind the scenes in the theater backstage. I love it, it's so lovely. And also the room is absolutely gorgeous. This area is a bit calmer, but I still love it. Look at this cute piazza. You can have coffee with a gorgeous view of this basilica, the Basilica of St. Prosperous, who is actually the, set, uh, the patron saint of Reggio Emilia. And usually there are the cathedrals, as you may know, that are called after the, uh, the saint patrons of the cities. Or in general, we usually start when we visit the churches, we usually start with the cathedrals. But here, I wanted to show you this church because it's really, really special. There is a legend beautiful legend linked to the uh, saint himself. The legend says that when Attila uh, and the Huns were coming on here from Rome after the defeat of Rome, Saint Prosper started to pray and summon the fog so thick that it managed to hit the entire city from the Huns and so it was saved. And the basilica was then built here and in the medieval times there was this tradition in Reggio Emilia because nearby there were some public prisons and on the 24th of November every year the day of St. Prosper's one of the inmates who were about to be executioned were chosen randomly as a lottery and brought here to show him grace of the saint patron is also a form of gratitude from the citizens and that person was freed and was not to be executed anymore so yeah there was this weird tradition but at least some people were safe from the execution
guys, we just stumbled upon this courtyard accidentally, just walking by. Just imagine for a second how many beautiful palaces used to be here. I mean, there are still these palaces, they are still beautiful, but people used to live in these palaces. In this, th these were houses basically, and they are so gorgeous. Look at these frescoes that you can still see here today. Look at these courtyards. I love this city so, so much. Once upon a time, the churches of Reggio Emilia were full of art masterpieces. But then, when Reggio Emilia passed under the rule of the Dukes of Este, who were notable for being huge art lovers, they allegedly collected so many artworks from different churches around the city to bring them all to their residence. But a couple of uh, years, maybe, you know, a couple of tens of years later, one of the Dukes of Este was so, so in debt that he had to sell so many of the family collections of artworks that they conserved. And that's how so many artworks from Reggio Emilia ended up in the art gallery in Dresden in Germany. So if you happen to be there, guys, know that so many important artworks that are now conserved there were found here around the city in so many different churches. Now you can see them in one place, but in Germany. Italian artworks. You know how history goes. And that's it for today, guys. That's it for our day in Reggio Emilia. And I hope that you enjoyed this vlog as much as I enjoyed discovering this place and all the great, amazing food that this place has to offer. I really hope that I managed to inspire you to come here because this place is super underrated. It's not touristy at all, but it's so, so worth your attention. It's so worth visiting for not only the great food that we've tried, but also for all the beauty of this place. It's so cute and so lovely with these narrow cobblestone streets and lovely piazzas and amazing cafes where you can just sit and sip your coffee and, you know, people watch and relax and enjoy the Dolce Vita, the Italian style of just, you know, enjoying life because this is real life in Italy, guys. And having said that, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything new. We have so many amazing vlogs for you in store and Christmas is coming to our channel soon. So we have a few Christmas vlogs as well. Stay tuned and like and comment this video because I always read your comments and try to reply to them as much as possible. I absolutely love hearing from you, hearing your feedback. So yeah, don't forget to comment. Thank you so much for being here. Please explore more and enjoy your day.